Hello all, I'm Mark Wilbur of LogicMason.com and currently a student at Hack Reactor, an intensive school for front-end web developers. It's, uh, I've decided I am going to actually put these things online, so maybe I'll start recording one every week now. As I had guessed last time, we did dive into databases and have some fun with that over the past week. Uh, the other thing we did in our fifth week that was uh, it's kind of interesting. Was we had a we had like a a free sprint. So the whole time we've been doing these classes, we've had uh, two day sprints, is what we call them. They're just two days of working on some project. We start in the afternoon. We work that half of the day, then the entire day the next day, and then the morning of the day following that. So a total of two days. And we have lunch, and then we go on to the new thing. Um, during the first four weeks, I mean, we did an incredible amount of stuff. We did uh, HTML, CSS, a whole bunch of uh, just JavaScript fundamentals and computer science fundamentals, Backbone JS. We rewrote underscore JS ourselves, which uh, entailed learning about uh, uh, closures and functional programming. And um, what else did we do? Node.js. We did. Uh, we worked with a Parse API. We wrote uh, chat room clients to deal with the Parse API. Then we wrote our own chat room server side components with Node.js, and then we hooked the two together. Uh, so, understandably, since a lot of the students had no background in programming, and uh, a lot of us had no background in design, and we were all in different spots, we had a we had some students were having a hard time, and actually everyone was struggling at one point or another. And so we had a makeup sprint where we could work on whatever we needed to. I felt pretty confident on the computer science -y stuff, the math stuff. You know, I did, I did uh, go to college very early as a math major, even if that's not what I graduated with. Um, I had fun with the uh, Enrobes and Queens, all that stuff. But what was harder for me was the working with with Backbone, and also we only had two days dealing with CoffeeScript. So I decided to do another project of my own during this, this kind of free makeup sprint. And I used Backbone and CoffeeScript to make the prototype of a game that I have wished existed for a long time. Here's the idea. You've got robots that fight each other, but you don't control them directly. You give a robot a command, like a, a program that it runs sequentially, just looping over the commands over and over and over. And once the, the fight starts, you can't, you know, you can't control it or do anything to it. So, excuse me, so let's say you only gave the robot two commands, turn left and shoot. You'd have this robot that just sits there going like shooting in, in different directions as it turns. Um, then someone might make a, a more clever robot that that moves and shoots, or moves in circles and shoots. Uh, better still, you can make one that, that goes to the corner, one of the corners, and shoots from there. The next step would be making a robot uh, that would look for the other robot and, and shoot at it. The way I always wanted this game to work would be you would have, you would have computer robots you would fight against. There'd be super easy ones, and they'd get harder and harder. And then eventually you'd just be able to let your robot play against any anyone else's robot. And they'd be ranked. You'd have leaderboards, kind of like, uh, I don't know if any of you have played Desktop Tower Defense. You get a leaderboard that shows uh, who has gotten the highest scores. And you can see the patterns. You can see like the structures they built to get that score. I would want to do that with this. Like, make it so you can see the, uh, the programs of successful robots. It's not that far along, it's just a prototype right now. But uh, here, I want you guys to have a look. Okay, so here it is. Right now there's just one robot on the screen and its program just has one command, be idle. Check this out. Make it turn right. Now the robot's rotating. I can add movement. So now it will go right and move, right and move, right and move. So it's going in circles. Adding another movement command will make it do larger circles. I could, of course, change the right to left. And keep in mind, when 
this game is done. Like I don't intend for people to be uh, changing the program mid-course. I'm just showing you how it works. Like I want, I want the user to be able to make the program here, and then after the robot is made, then uh, you know, then they they have it fight. Everything in here is a backbone object. This was great practice. Like I definitely had to learn how to take care of some backbone garbage collection issues. Uh, in order to have like constantly uh, or constantly be making missiles like this um, now I, I can add a bunch of uh, bunch of backbone robots and you know like the performance is okay it's not awesome but works well enough oh, I haven't I haven't been calling the uh, the empty commands yet um, this is basically it I intend to have the game work with uh, two robots at once but uh, you know, it's sometimes it's fun to add a zillion of them. I've got hit points implemented, uh, basic movement, the the program, like adding the program has been the hardest thing. Um, it it took a, a bit of a bit of thinking to figure out how to do this without using eval. What I finally ended up doing was in my step function, I've got something called uh, an attribute or a script. The attributes here are backbone attributes. Um, every every robot has a script, and that script is just a list of commands. Uh, here's here's a default script, just uh, just a bunch of random commands like move left, right, fire, idle. In the script, we get a command from the current line number, and the line number is incremented every time you go through. So it's basically like get the next command from the script. And this line was the one I was happy about. You can just take a string, which was actually generated from user input, and say, hey, execute the string as if it's a method on this object. So if the user put in move, for example, it'll run this move function. If they put in write, it'll run this function that turns the robot right. Same thing with firing, going left, idling. I've got a you know, I've got to write some sort of parser so that users can give more sophisticated commands like, uh, um, you know, things with functions or or conditionals. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm happy. Like I've I've wanted to see a robot game like this for the longest time, and uh, nobody seems to be making one. And it's not nearly as as hard of a challenge as I had thought. Like, so I I'd, I'd love to get all of your opinions like this this is only a two-day project I'm not seriously invested in it or the direction it's going but I you know I like it I kind of want to kind of want to keep working on it what I mean what kind of features could I add to this that would be fun like uh, do you think the whole idea of an automated fighting game where you just write the program instead of controlling the robot sounds interesting at all if so like what would you like to see like what kinds of commands um, maybe like some other game features like uh, um, having like attribute points you could put into firing speed or or like execution speed of all the commands or armor or, or something like that um, yeah please please post the uh, post whatever ideas you have on the comments at logicmason.com